if you like entertainment, you want him to run because here's what Howard Stern just said. Howard Stern just made a bold prediction about Donald Trump's 2024 run. This is a The List story. During a recent episode of his hit series on Series XM show, Stern floated the idea of running for 2024 against Donald Trump. The well-respected interviewer quipped that he is primary, primed to totally beat his ass. In fact, Stern considers running against Trump his civic duty, he said, since it means potentially stopping a controversial polit- uh, politician from securing a second term, I would just sit there and play that effing clip of him trying to fix the election over and over again, Stern said, referring to the now infamous call Trump made to Brad, attempting to talk to the Georgia Secretary of State into engineering proof of election fraud and is on his behalf. There's no way I'd lose. Stern co-host Robin Quiver said, agreed and said, if Trump decides to run again, you have to run against him. You can't leave it to the Democrats. Interesting. You think Stern would run? You think this is just no. one of those gibberish stuff that he's talking I think about? He's, yeah. he's it, a talking head, and he does what talking heads do. And, and you know, I, I will say this: Howard Stern has become completely irrelevant by choice. Uh, there's a serious problem with him. I think I guarantee you, Sirius has serious regrets about re-upping his contract last year. He doesn't want to be there. You know, he took the summer off. He took June, July, August off. He w- he took it off. He got it into his contract. He is so bitter. He he's so fearful. His his shtick is so old right now. And I'm a huge Howard Stern fan. And I guarantee you, if you ask any Howard Stern fan out there right now, they're not into it anymore because he's just so bitter. He's so angry. He never leaves his house in the Hamptons. He's so disconnected from everything that's going on. This worked in the '90s when he was going to run for governor, and he said something yeah. like this. He'd get a real rally, but right now he's just saying it because he's out of material. So I'm having dinner with Mark. Marvin and D. Del Valle in L.A. at Palau's winning. And conversation comes about Trump. He's asking, do you think Trump's going to run? And I gave him my feedback on what I think is going to happen. And he says, you know what's my biggest concern about Trump? I said, what's that? He says, Trump used to sell the dream. Okay, He used to excite. He used to sell the dream. He used to say, America's this, America's that, America's this. And he says, for whatever reason, over the years, he got so bitter. And it was only about going against the people and you know, just being animosity, berating all these enemies and all this stuff. I said, you know what it reminded me of? He said, what? I said, if anybody in Trump's camp hears this, you may want to consider this, although there's not a lot to be considered. But <laughs> if you do consider this, here's what I would say. Say you have a team of 100 sales guys that work for you. Okay, if you got 100 sales guys that That's work for you. a lot of people you, having sex on the floor. Yeah, if, if, if they're <laughs> under 25 for sure. So that office would need to be sponsored by Trojan. But let's just say you do have an office of 100 salespeople, okay? Here's what the demographic's going to look like. Out of your 100 sales guys, one of them's going to be the dominator. That's beating and crushing everybody. That example that everybody gets annoyed because he or she makes more money than everybody else by a mile. Then you're going to have four or five top performers, Okay that are stars, but not the superstar. Then you're going to have 10 people that are doing good, okay? Then you got the middle people that are, like, showing up. They're not consistent. They're inconsistent. But the same way you have the one guy that's a super true believer in you, you have the one guy that cannot stand you, despises you. Every word you say, he just hangs on that to use it during lunch to tell the guys, did you hear what Tom said? Did you hear what Tom said? This is why Tom's not a good leader. We should go work somewhere else, right? And then you have about 10 complainers that follow that one big deceptive guy, right? Okay. When a sales leader gets up and speaks to his 100 guys, if you talk to your group as if you're only trying to prove that deceptive guy, the negative guy wrong, you're going to lose your audience. Mm -hmm. You have to get up and talk to the 80% that are willing to have somebody sell them the dream. Trump stopped talking to people that were open-minded, and he only talked to his enemies, you gotta get. You gotta forget about the enemies that are gonna be there. They're gonna say what they're gonna say. If you would have sold the dream, it would have been a little bit more about, hey, America's great, America's this, America's that. That messaging went away a little bit. So, yep. look, if, if Trump decides to ro- go run again, the messaging would need to change a little bit. Approach would need to change yeah. a little bit because if he goes the yeah. same way. Uh, results are going to be the same. I, I totally yeah. agree with that. And here's the other thing: is it, part of his motivation for running payback. And getting revenge. And I have one more term. I can do do whatever the hell. What do you think? I'd say it definitely is an element involved in that. It's the same thing with Cuomo thinking about running for attorney general. It's probably the main reason why he would want to do that. You think it is a revenge thing for Trump? What percentage do you think is revenge for Trump? Between uh, 13 to 24 percent. Here we go. Freaking. I think about these things. I don't throw out random numbers. That sounds very random. but That is not random. That is not random. There's a low and a high. It's like instead of saying 80 percent, it's like 70. 
thirty-six percent. But by the way, I I don't think it's thirteen percent. I think it's a pretty high number. That is actually. I think it's revenge. higher too. I don't think it's thirteen percent. I think it's you guys embarrass me. Watch what I'm going to mm-hmm. do to you. I think there's an yeah. element of that taking Nothing place. To lose. Yeah, I think there's an element of that taking place, and I think there's the other element. You know what the other element is? You know what's the cool thing about somebody leaving you and talking trash about you, and then a year, two years later, saying, "Man, freaking a, I miss that guy." I, I don't want to say this, but you know, mm-hmm. you know what the I'm saying, David. Thing. It's the, the ex girlfriend. That's right, Mary. Mary, if you're listening, David loves you. <laughs> David loves you. He Come cries back. every day in front of my office, saying, "What do I need to do to get her back?" If you're listening, please get Mary, back. I can explain the text messages. She yeah, really those text messages. Get back to him. <laughs> that DM he sent to that one girl. It was a mistake. <laughs> Go ahead, Tyler. I just I think one of the best things that happened to Trump was getting kicked off of social media. Because everybody hated Trump. They said, no no more mean tweets. Well, now you don't have them. Now Trump's not out there running yeah. his mouth all the time, 24 hours a day, unfiltered Trump. You lose that. So people, like David said, it's like an ex-girlfriend. They start to rethink and say, well, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, he needs a different Let approach. Let me ask you a question. You were at Mar-a-Lago approach, right? recently, right? Yeah, I was. What's the vibe out there? I mean, he's living there, isn't he? Isn't F- fired up is yeah. what it was. Huh. It fired up and... Uh, lit up is what it was. So you know, K- Kellyanne was there. Jared was there. It was an f- American First Policy Institute. You know, the whole uh, 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 idea of uh, low taxes, low regulation. Larry Kudlow was there. It was, was more like a business uh, uh, principles than it was more about the political stuff. And I think Trump gave a 90-minute speech. You know what he looked like? He looked like he was campaigning. Hmm. That's what it looked like. Right. He looked like he was campaigning. So yeah. we're going to see what's going to end up uh, happening. But uh, – uh, Confidence was pretty up there with a lot of interesting influencers. I have a in question. The world. I have a question. If, if say Biden and Trump ran, do you think on any party they try to split the vote? Like there any breakout and try to run? What do you mean? Like a Ross Perot style in terms of more somebody that's not. Oh, I see what that, you're saying. Like would the Re- okay. would the Republican Party split? Would the Democratic Party split? Would both of them split? I, I'd say there's more of a chance of that happening in 2024 than in the past. I think it's a possibility. I, I do. Listen, here's but which I'll, party then? Here's listen. Here's Republican. what I'd like to see. Here's what I'd like to see. I think I, I, as a strategist, if you're a strategist, I consider myself a strategist where I'm seeing what I would do if I'm giving any kind of counsel to somebody. Right. This is a very good time for somebody to be a hero. Mm-hmm. This is a very, very good time for somebody to come in and be a hero, okay? Mm-hmm. And, and from coming from a place, I'm saying, listen, here's where I'm coming from. This is your campaign. You know how everybody's campaigning around Obamacare. Everybody's entitled to mm-hmm. have an health insurance, right? Forward or dream or yeah. change or whatever, right? Trump's was make America great again. You know, you know what the campaign should be? Make America unify again. Mm-hmm. Something about unify, right? So think about if somebody ran on unification today and they went up there and they said, look, here's what I want to do. Let me tell you what we differ in. We differ in this, 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 this. Fine. Let me tell you what we agree on. Family, kids, da 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 So are we going to let seven things that we disagree on outweigh the 98 things that we agree on? Okay? Here's my goal. You're not going to like all the decisions I make because my goal is to bring us more to the center and unify. Right now, we are either tilted to the left or we're tilted to the right. Here's the problem. If you're tilted to the left, you keep doing circles. If you're tilted to the right, you keep doing circles. The only way they're going to keep moving forward is to get a little bit more to the center. So I would like to see somebody from like a, like a, I don't even want to say rock, but I would like to see somebody that's coming in that is not afraid of losing a few cool points from their side of the aisle to say, listen, man, Unifying America is more important than getting those cool that's, points from that's you. That's how you convert, too. And especially there's the silent middle you need it's to win over. It's a great time right now to do it. Oh, my God. People it's crave that type of message. It's a great time right now to do it. The, the thing is, it has to be authentic. I don't think you can just automatically uh, turn yourself into saying that this is going to be who I, I am. Agree. So if, if someone comes from that business background or something that's inspiring and motive, people want to hear that right now. They're craving it. Who would that be? Who would that be? To come that can give that message. Well, Obama act- is one for sure. You think Obama could well, because, unify? Uh, well, if he wanted to, I think he has that power because he does have that type of charisma. And but who's he, he who's he going to knight to carry that? I'm just thinking about people right now that have the the actual gravitas to do it, have the collateral politically to do it, and have the personality. Um, no, that's what I'm asking. So I agree with what you said about Obama, but who's he going to knight? Who's the person with the gravitas right. and the thing that you're talking about <laughs> that Obama can come and say? It's got to be somebody very, very close to him that he trusts. And it can't be some rando this is Democrat sound that, crazy. that they throw. But you know who I think? You know, Michelle? Uh, who, no. Oh. You know who I think would be great? 
um, to to be able to do that, and he has no interest in doing that. It, it, it's and I, listen, hang tight before people flip out. I think it's a person like Rogan. I think that's the kind of a person that could pull it off. I think it's a person with a personality like him who brought a Bernie Sanders in and he says, I think he makes sense. Cool. And then he brought Tulsi Gabbard. I think she makes sense. And he is now in the center where he pushes back and saying, here's what I'm trying to see if I'm going to fix myself or not without relying. Hey, I got good after two days later. I think he could pull it off, but I don't think he has any interest in doing that at all. But it's a personality like him. Mm -hmm. It can't be too ambitious of a person because if it's too – and I'm not saying Joe's not ambitious. It's not the point that he's not ambitious. Joe's living the life that he wants to live today. Mm -hmm. It's like when I was on the podcast with him, I'm like, he's like, like, I have no interest in starting a company. You want me to do more stuff? Add more stuff to my plate? No, I'm good. So he's a systematic guy that he's living a life right now that I bet is like his dream life. Yeah, He he has has his buckets and he fills them up as they need. But I think he does very well with enemies. I think he does very well with – uh, dealing with enemies. I think he knows how to uh, bring the other person's guard down. I think he sat down with some of the smartest guys in, in, in the world. I, I don't know. I think a personality like that could pull it off. Uh, uh, when you think about it, Candace Owens, Candace would be a Trump type of a mm. personality. Shapiro... It, it has it, to be somebody who's not too too uh, confrontational, but also they're not willing to back away from it. It's more kind of that's questioning. That's what I'm saying. You're coming in as, yeah. let's solve this let's as opposed to, I'm going to prove why yeah, you're wrong. Let's talk about it. Like, let's talk about what it. Am I, what am I not I seeing? Agree. What are you not seeing? I like, think where, it's a guy like him. That? Yeah. I think it's yeah. a guy like him. Well, it's sure. somebody that has a, a thick skin, who's built something, who doesn't really care, because they're going to be attacked. They have to give away five Especially to six years of their yeah. life. They have to yeah. give it away. I don't know. I uh, Listen. <laughs> It would be a very funny campaign, uh, the Joe Rogan experience. You know, President Rogan, if he ran for office, that would be daily podcast from the White House. <laughs> <laughs> podcast number 3,147. It could get more of a reach. Uh, like, that's what's crazy. Uh, the that media would be, would be so gone funny, at that point. You know, him doing press conference, with smoking weed, union. and it's just oh, like, oh, hey, oh, how you doing? Oh, <laughs> only thing, though, would uh, um, Spotify would have to up his contract by like a billion dollars. Oh, my God. With those time, woke he, he would be, be like annoyed. Howard Stern saying, I need yeah. four years off. I need yeah. four years off. I'll come back to you, but I need about four years <laughs> off. We'll see what happens next four years. But I think we need a personality like that. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.